500 what? Sure. sure. What's the one that you have to see? What is the couple that I couldn't are all little bit so What we got? I thought I collected that yesterday. Yeah, you did. Oh, no, uh, remember we uh, missed it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that goes on this pile right here in my book. Also there, either one. 117. Yeah, I did 117. Oh, yeah. 117, here we go. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if I have time to do all that. 117. Yes. My voice is a little. Okay, we need to be. My voice is a little, uh, yeah. Yeah, why? I did. Was it cool? Oh, was it good? Oh, it was the best demo I've ever seen. It was amazing. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It was. It was good. All right, 117. Yeah, my voice is a little scratchy from yelling because I was so excited last night. Bacterial digestion is an economical advent method of sewage treatment. The reaction, boom, there it is. It's an intermediate step in the conversion of nitrogen and organic compounds. What mass of bacterial tissue is produced in the treatment for every one times 10 to the fourth kilograms of wastewater? 3% NH4 by mass. So this 3% thing is the thing that you have to figure out how to do. Once you see it one time, you'll be like, oh, I can do that. Assume that 95% of the ammonium ions are consumed by the bacteria. What am I going to start with on 117? I started with the waste. So I'm going to start out with my 1.0 times 10 to the, what was it, fourth? Kilograms of waste. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say for every this is what you do. This is the tricky part. 100 kilograms of waste. What do I get? I get 3.0 kilograms of NH4+. Plus. Do you see what I just did there? Do you see what I just did there? That's the 3%. Can you tell me what page that was? 115E. Oh, I kind of get it now. So that's the 3%. Then, now I've got kilograms of ammonia. I don't want kilograms of ammonia. I want grams. So I'm going to say for every one kilogram of NH4+, plus, I have 1,000 grams of NH4+. Plus. Then I'm going to go to my molar mass, which is 18 point what? 04? Is that close enough? Grams of NH4 in one mole of NH4. And then I'm going to stoic step it. So in the problem, they said that I have 55 moles of NH4 for, I'm trying to get to what? C5H702? For every one mole of BT. I'm just going to write BT because I'm running out of room. That's my bacterial tissue. That's my C5H702. And for every one mole of BT, that molar mass I have is 113.12 grams. So I would solve that first and then we're almost done. I would solve that first and we're almost done. Remember, the book problems are in general harder than the test. Okay. So like how much harder? <coughs> what do you mean how much harder? Just yeah. harder. So like on the review sheet. I don't have a percentage. What? The review sheets will be more realistic than the test. Okay. Yes. That gave me um, 3.4 times 10 to the fourth grams of tissue. 3.4 times 10 to the fourth grams of BT. But what did it tell me? What percent are actually consumed? <coughs> Only 95. So what do I have to do with this number? Times 0.95. Times 0.95. So my final answer I had was 3.2 
times 10 to the fourth grams of bacterial tissue. So I think the hardest thing was what to do with that 3%. So you could have made this for every 1,000 kilograms, this 300. It doesn't matter, but you just have to use that percent. I heard 90 something next, Lucy. 94? 94. Chani boy. Yes. This is a Chani boy. So 94, a compound contains only C, H, and N. Combustion of 35 milligrams of the compound produces, I'm going to sneeze, 33.5 milligrams of CO2. 41. Whew. Pineapple. No, watermelon. Watermelon. <laughs> I just repressed that sneeze. Wow. It's still in there, though. 33, it is. But I stopped that one. Is somebody not here? Oh, you're leaving? I'll record it. You can watch later. Good luck. Good luck. 33.5 milligrams CO2, 41.1 milligrams H2O. What's the empirical form of the compound? Who thinks they got 94? Nobody? Okay. So, here's how you start a Chani boy. And this is really a, a chin boy. There's no oxygen in this one. But you could have a Chani is if oxygen is in it as well. So on 94, I'm going to start out with one of the two things they give me, which is 33.5 milligrams of CO2. Would you agree, you might not like this, that there are 44.0 one milligrams of CO2 in one millimole of CO2. How much do you hate that? Is that not true though? Is that not true? Why not? Convert it. Sure. But this just saves me a conversion step. Agreed? Yes. I know. There, there is none. There is none. You can convert it all the way to moles if you want to. It just saves me a step. <laughs> I know. And would you agree for every one millimole of CO2 that I have one millimole of carbon? Do you see how I got that? Well, how many? It's just one carbon, right? C1. Yes. Which means that for every one millimole of carbon, I have 12.01 milligrams of carbon. Yes? Wow. If you want to do it in grams, you can. No. This just saves work. I know, you hate it. Can you add millimoles to the list, please? Yeah. Thank you. So this gives me 9.14 milligrams of carbon. 9.14 milligrams of carbon. What? Is that appropriate? That you hate millimoles? Okay. Okay. So, I have carbon by itself so far. Now, what else do I have to get by itself? Oxygen. Is oxygen going to be easy to get by itself? Here's the problem with oxygen. In 94, you'd agree that oxygen is in both of those compounds. Yes? So what I'm trying to get to here is like a percent. So I'm going to save oxygen for last and just subtract. I'm going to save oxygen for last and just subtract. Could I isolate hydrogen? I could. Because they gave me 41.1 milligrams of H2O. Water is 18.015 milligrams of H2O. I know you guys love this. For every one millimole of H2O. And every one millimole of H2O has how many millimoles of H? Two. Has two millimoles of H. Are you guys okay that I'm just using the subscripts? It's two H's, so I'm saying it's two millimoles. I had not if you're okay with that. Yes. Okay. And every one millimole of H has a molar mass of 1.008 milligrams of H. So that gave me 
4.60 milligrams of H. Now I have parts. I can do percent by mass. So I'm going to take my 9.14 milligrams of carbon, and I'm going to divide that by what? What's my total? 194. I want the whole compound. It's not 33.5. It's going to be divided by what? You don't have your book. 35. I have to divide it by the total for the CHN compound. So divided by the 35.0 milligrams of the compound times 100. That will give you your, your percent of carbon. So that gave me 26.1% carbon. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my hydrogen. Do you see why I left this in milligrams now? Because it was milligrams at the end. It just saved me a step. Yeah. You can convert if you want to. You're going to get the same thing. You're going to get the same thing. Then I'm going to take my 4.60 milligrams of H. I'm going to divide that by the total. So I'm going to divide that by my 35.0 milligrams of the total times 100 and I got from that one 13.1 percent H. Can I now add those up and subtract one from 100 to figure out my percent oxygen? Yes. yes. So this plus this that's going to be 39.2 so 60.8 yes. So I have 60.8 percent oxygen. If you have 3% that add up to 100, guess what I can do? I'm going to assume 100 grams, right? Yes? So therefore, this becomes grams of carbon, this becomes grams of hydrogen, and this becomes grams of oxygen. So this 26.1% carbon is now going to be 26.1 grams of carbon times 12.011 grams of carbon in one mole of carbon. That's going to give me a moles. I'm going to take my hydrogen, which is 13.1 grams of H times 1.008 grams of H in one mole of H. That's going to give me moles. And lastly, I'm going to take my 60.8, I don't know why I'm separating this by line, grams of O times 15.999 grams of O and one mole of O. And that's going to give me three moles. You guys have done empirical formulas, right? So divide, this gives me 2.17 moles of carbon. This gave me 12.99 moles of hydrogen. And this one gave me 4.34 moles of nitrogen. Now that I have my three moles, what do I do? Divide by the smallest. Divide by the smallest. So, divide by 2.17, divide by 2.17, divide by 2.17. What's the carbon going to give me? Why did you mm. oxygen That's still an O. No, on the oh. My bad. It's O. But in the problem, it says C-A-N. Oh, shoot, you're right. My bad. This should be nitrogen. So the whole thing's wrong. No. This should be 14.007 grams of N. In one mole of N. Yeah, I think I just wrote the wrong. I was thinking oxygen and not. Should this be oxygen here, too? This should be percent nitrogen. At least that was the one you didn't do. Right. So we're still good. Um, that's still, so this is nitrogen. I just wrote oxygen down. My bad. It's still the right number. I just wrote down oxygen instead of nitrogen. Check it. It's 60.8 divided by 14.007, 4.34. Can someone make sure? Okay. So 2.17 divided by 2.17 is 1. 4.34 divided by 2.17 is 2. 
Trying to put this one in your calculator, but what does it give you? Six. It's six. 5.999, yep. So my answer is what? C, H6, N2. So the thing that you have to look out for is sometimes when you're doing this work up here to get these percents, if you have something coming from another compound, you divide it by that compound to get the total percent. That's the only thing that's different when you have like a, a Chani. <coughs> but that is how you do a Chani boy start to finish. 88. 88. Let me check. Let me get to my 88. One second, hold. 88. Oh, we'll hit the astronaut problem for sure. 88 should be C, H4, N2, O. Oh, I messed up that. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter what order. I wouldn't care about the order as of now, how you wrote it. As long as you had one carbon, four H's, two N's, one O, I'm cool with it. 88, 88 should have been CH4N2O. CH4N2O. 111. 111? 111's a short one. So let's do 111 next. Which one is it want? Mind boggling? 111. The reusable booster rockets on the space shuttle employ a mixture of aluminum and ammonium perchlorate for fuel. A possible equation is there. What mass of NH4ClO4 should be used in the fuel mixture for every kilogram of aluminum? What am I going to start with on 111? They said for every kilogram of aluminum. So what am I going to start out with? A kilogram of aluminum. Yes. Can I just make that directly into 1,000 grams? You guys okay with that? So I have 1,000 grams of aluminum. We cool with that? Okay, aluminum molar mass is 26.98. Uh, two grams of AL, one mole of AL. Stoic step, in the problem, I've got three moles of aluminum, and I'm trying to get to what? NH4, ClO4? So that's a three to three, is the three moles of NH4, ClO4. And for every one mole, of NH4ClO4. We've got to add up that molar mass, which I'll just give it to you. It's 117.49. 117.49 grams of NH4ClO4. Did anybody get this? Wait, 117.49. 117.49. No, that's the whole problem. What's it? Oh, I really, really overthought that. What? 111, they don't ask for an answer in a unit. So I would accept kilograms or grams. Who got it? Who got an answer? Yeah? Yeah, I had 4,355, depending on your sig digs. Because they don't really give you sig digs to start, so I. I don't know. I guess this would be 1,000 point, however you want to do it. 4,355 grams of NH4ClO4. I would accept 4,360. Just depends how you did sig digs. So in that type of problem, you don't, do you have to put like that answer and then over one kilogram of aluminum? No. Or just because it already asked? It already, we just, because we started with the one kilogram, so you don't really have to put it over. Are we ready to attack 
the astronaut. Okay. Notice how I'm putting my paper for this one. It's a long one. Okay, then I got a whole page. So. No. All right, so on 120, the space shuttle control system handled by excess CO2, what we breathe out, is 4%. So you know that 4% is going to come into place somewhere, right? Mass by air by reacting it with lithium hydroxide, LiOH, to form lithium carbonate, Li2, CO3, and water. What's the first thing you're going to have to do on this? Balance. Write an equation. <laughs> right? Because they didn't give us an equation. So my equation is going to be, here is, this is 120. LiOH plus CO2 yields what? Um, Li2 CO3 plus H2O. One of the sci-fi movies I watched, they're in this big like tube spaceship, and they actually do this. So at the end, they're like running out of uh, air. So lithium hydroxide is essentially just like water softener. Mm -hmm. So they poured a bunch into the air system, and then it rains on the ship because it makes water. So it was kind of a cool, I can't think of the name of what it was. It's just some, I need some kind of time travel or space travel or like multiverse for me to watch it. And it had one of those. So I watched it. I'll look it up later. So on 120, I'm going to start out with my 25,000 grams of LiOH. Because I know I can get that to moles, yes? Okay. So I'm going to start out with my 25,000 grams of LiOH. So LiOH molar mass is 23.95 grams. What? Oh, yeah, probably should balance it. Two. Two. Is that balanced? Okay. Thank you. Sorry I'm writing small, but if I'm going to fit it on one page. I guess I'll zoom in, and then we'll zoom back out at the end. So we'll zoom back out at the end. In one mole of LiOH. So I know that for every two moles of LiOH, I have one mole of carbon dioxide. Every one mole of CO2, my stomach is growling, is 44.009 grams of CO2. This next step is my percent. What is going to go on the bottom of my next step? Not a hundred. Not one gram. Yes. I know that for every four grams of CO2, how many grams of air am I going to get out of that? What percent was it? Four percent. So what am I going to put on the top here? 100 grams of air. That's my percent. But this time, my four is on the bottom, right? Because I'm starting out with my CO2 in the top. Does that make sense how I'm using the 4% here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes? So there's my percent. There's my percent. And I still have one more rate. Agreed? So I still want to, I know I've got at least one more rate. So now I have grams of air. Then they said the density of air, right, was what? 0 0.0010 grams. So for every 0 0.0010 grams of air, I have one milliliter of air. Now, what other rate did they give me? Uh, 20, liters of air. 20 liters of air per minute. So I need to get milliliters to liters. Well, yes, I have to go to liters first. So I'm going to say for every 1,000 so this was another rate they gave me. 1,000 milliliters of air and one liter of air. 
That does not say layer. It says one liter of air. And in order to save me a step, how many astronauts do I have on the ship? Seven. So are you okay with me doing seven times 20? Yeah. So I'm going to say that I need 140 liters of air. So I just took my 20 times seven. You guys cool with that? Yeah. Okay. For every one minute. That was another rate. So these are the three rates that they gave me. What am I trying to figure out though? How long could clean air be generated? Did you guys solve this for hours or minutes? I feel like hours make more sense. You can stop, solve in minutes, I went to hours. Either one's okay, because it didn't say. So then I'm gonna say that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So really, it's just knowing how to use the percent, right? And then your other rates. That's why I always say save the rate. So I knew I had to get it to grams of carbon dioxide to get my percent. I knew I had to get it to milliliters of, to, get to liters of air to get my minutes. And then the density, I knew I had to get it to grams of air as well. So save those rates. That wasn't actually that bad. Yeah, right? Well, I know, I it's the setup. It. It's the setup. It's a lot. It's a lot. But don't get overwhelmed by like a paragraph. Because like when you work that out, you have three rates. You just have to figure out how to use them in your story. So I got for my answer, I had 68 hours. I had 68 hours for that. So those seven astronauts got about three days. Do you guys hear what the astronauts stuck up on the space station now? Yeah. There's two people up there. They're stuck stuck until they can get a spaceship up there to get them off. Like, they're not dying, but like they need to get them out of there like fairly soon. Didn't they like go up and then it wasn't like safe to come down? Yeah. It's, space is dangerous. But also that's like, I would live on the You live up there? Yeah, there's so much, there's like a farm up there. There's what? There's like farms with food and like. Yeah, but like, there's also no protection from like the atmosphere. Also, like, like you, you gotta, gotta and like you come back with no bone density, even if you exercise. You don't get to lay in the bed. You see the guy that lived up there for a year? He's got like eye problems. Like there's there's a lot of issues with like long term space. Yeah, they haven't put me up there, so that's why. <laughs> You're built different. It's probably because you don't eat potatoes. Yes. So yeah. I would see. If, like, if, potatoes they, if there's there. potatoes on the ISS, I'm just like shooting them out of space. <laughs> what else would they farm? He's going to space them. That's what they call that. When you shoot someone in space, you space them. Um, I think I'm think traumatized from Interstellar, though, to be honest. Oh okay. my gosh. I'm so scared of space from watching that. You guys ever watch The Expanse? No. It's a pretty good one. Have you watched any, The Martian? Any space movie? I've seen The Martian. Have you read it? So, I've not read it. I need to read the book. Yeah. Any other ones you guys want to see? That's all I need. I start Nothing else? So there's no other ones you guys want to see right now. No. Well, let's. We have ten minutes left. Let's do another one. You tell me. Oh yeah, one twenty-four. Okay. What do you mean his hat? Oh, it's his birthday! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Grady! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Yes, you, you can go get, get some candy out of the drawer. What? Can you yeah, turn sure. the camera on? Do you want to be on it for the special edition? Birthday edition. Happy birthday. <laughs> there he yeah. is. You are now immortalized. Immortalized on. You're going to be on YouTube. You're going to be on YouTube. Do you ever want to I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. 124. What is 124? 
Calcium sulfate, one kilogram. Okay, 124. Now I'm writing sideways, so I can't stop. Now I'm just gonna have to go for it. I know, like once you start sideways, you can't go back. It's just like, it's there. It's there, we're stuck. Oh, what about 150? All right, because I want to do 152. All right, 124, consider the following unbalanced equation. That's annoying. So my unbalanced equation is CA3PO4 parentheses 2 plus H2SO4. Have you guys noticed the symbols? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk about those next chapter. Like is CA, S yep, is that matters. Like what? Aqueous. Yes. Okay. Get it. Okay. Balance this thing. Three here. What's going to go in front of here? Uh, is it going to be a three? Did you guys balance it? So I put a three here. That means I'm going to put a three here. So I'm going to put a two on the H3PO4, right? Okay, good. So on this one, I think this is just a, I think it's just a limiting reactant one. Is it? Yeah. I just said it because it was next on. Oh, because I'm just going to start out with 1,000 grams of CA3PO4 two. I'm going to start out with 1,000 grams of H2SO4, but do the 98% thing. Run them both to moles. Whichever one's smaller for the one to three. That's all you're doing on 124. Let's do 153. What? One more time? Let's just do it really quick. We got time. So I have 1,000 grams of CA3PO4, parentheses two. I'm going to convert that to moles. So there is 310. 0.18 grams of CA3PO42 in one mole of CA3PO42. So, calculator. How many moles of CA3PO42 does that get me? Like three? Something? And my calculator is dead. What is it? Oh yeah, we're just dividing by a thousand. Three point one zero eight moles of CA three P O four two. Now on the other one, they say it's ninety eight percent H two S O four by mass, right? Yes. Yep. So this one I'm going to, have to do one extra step. I'm going to start out with my one thousand grams of H2SO4, but I know that for every 100 grams of concentrated H2SO4, how much am I actually getting? 90. Only 98 grams of H2SO4. And now I would do my molar mass. So H2SO4 molar mass is 98.09 grams of H2SO4 in one mole of H2SO4. So now I'm going to solve for my moles of H2SO4. So, one, 1,000 divided by 100 is 10. Well, let's do it. 1,000 times 98 equals divided by 98 divided by 1,000. Oops. It's 10. Yeah. 10 moles of H2SO4. And I know for every one mole of CA3, so remember, I have one mole of this, yes? I have three moles of this. So for every one mole of this, I need three times worth the other amount. So for every one mole, I need three times amount of this to over here for H2SO4, right? What is three times three? Nine. Nine. Do I have nine? I have more than nine. So therefore, my H2SO4 is my excess. 
So this is my limiting reactant on 124. So now it says how much can be made. I have to run moles of this to grams of this, moles of this to grams of that to finish it off. Cool? Okay. 153. Is that what we're doing, 153? It's 150. 150. 150. On this one, I think people just look at it and they're like, what the heck is going on? This is hard. Okay? So on 150, I have E3H8. Yes? What? E is just like unknown, right? The first thing I'm going to do is, and they told me that I have 91.72% E, agreed? And 8.73% H. Do these add up to 100 grams? Yes. So that means I can assume 100 grams, and this can turn into what for H? Grams. So I'm going to say 8.73 grams of H times 1.008 grams of H in one mole of H. Now, would you agree for every 8 moles of H, I have 3 moles of E? Yes. So that's going to give me my moles of E, which ends up giving you 3.25 moles of E. 150, they're asking me for what? The atomic mass of E, right? So if I have this many grams of H, what's my grams of E? 91.72, because I'm assuming 100. So I'm going to take my 91.72 grams of E, I'm going to divide it by the 3.25 moles of E, and that gives me a molar mass of 28.01 grams per mole of E. Does it ask me to identify what it is? But we could. What is it? It's silicon. It's SI. It is SI. So that was 150. So using your subscripts as your mole ratio. Use your subscripts as a mole ratio. Any other questions? What about 183? 183, did you guys get this one? 183. 183. I have element X that forms XCl2. So I have XCl2 plus, it says treat it, treating it with excess chlorine. So chlorine is always Cl2 because it's diatomic, agreed? Yeah. That makes XCl4. And they told me that I've got 10.00 grams of this. Um, this is excess. I don't know about that. And that makes 12.55 grams of that. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Yes. So could I figure out my mass of chlorine? How am I going to do that? This minus this, right? Yeah. Law of conservation of matter. So 12.55 grams of XCl4 minus 10.00 <coughs> grams of XCl2 equals 2.55 grams of Cl2. What am I going to do with that 2.55 grams of Cl2 now? Well, I know how many grams of Cl2. Is this a one-to-one -one ratio? Yeah. It is. Agreed? Yeah. So could I take 10 grams of this minus 2.55 and figure out my mass of X? Yeah. I could. So I'm going to take my 10.00 grams of XCl2. This only works because it's a one-to-one. -one. If it wouldn't, you'd have to like divide by two. Minus your 2.55 grams of Cl2. And that gives me 7.45 grams of X. 7.45 grams of X. 
Last thing I have to do is figure out how many moles of x I have. So it's kind of similar to the last one. I'm going to take my, am I still on the screen? 2.55 grams of Cl times 35.453, because now I'm just doing the individual element, not Cl2, grams of Cl and one mole of Cl. I have two moles of Cl for every one mole of x, because 2 to 1. It's XCL2. And I know, well, that's it. That's it. Because I'm talking about the individual element in here. I'm not really talking about, CL2 isn't like an element. I have to go to the elemental form. You have to divide the 2.55 by 2. I don't, because that's the CL in there. It's the same ratio. It's the same ratio. So that gives me um, 0 0.0360 moles of X. So once again, I've got grams, I've got moles, 7.45 divided by 0 0.0360 gives me 207 grams per mole. Therefore, X is what? Uh, lead. lead. It is lead. It's lead. That was a lot. My hand actually hurts. My hand actually hurts. Make sure you finish these up over the weekend. Work through that review sheet. Be ready to crush the test Monday. Who's going to wake up Nathan? <laughs>